Hey everyone, just a reminder that I do stream on Twitch at Stoop Child with three O's, giving away two awesome skins once I hit 50 Twitch followers there. So if you like my content, check me out, um, ask questions, tell me I suck, do whatever you need to do. And if you do enjoy the content, please like and subscribe on YouTube as well. Today we're going to be going over the Queen of the Banshees update 8.10, more specifically the God changes happening in this update and how those God changes will impact Joust. If you're looking for a item, rundown um, that is a separate video i'll put that in an annotation card above and then also in the description below um, but enough of that let's get right into it so the first and most obvious change that's happening in this update is that Kleena is coming uh, into the battlefield if you haven't uh, seen any videos there are tons of them out there uh, describing what she does so i'm not going to go into too much detail about that but she is an assassin uh, she can go into walls so it's pretty cool i had a chance to play her today a very very interesting character um, not going to be in ranked joust for a little while so it won't really impact your joust games but you're going to want to at least take her into jungle practice see what she does so that if there are games where eventually she comes in and um, you're playing against her you know exactly how to handle uh, what she does uh, the first god change we'll talk about today is Tiamat. She's getting a little bit of a nerf. She's been nerfed, I don't know, three or four times previously before this as well. Um, Death begets life, which is her passive, decreasing the percent mitigation that she gets from the base value from 30% to 25%. So she, in that ground stance, is going to be a little bit less tanky than she has been in the past. Primordial Onslaught, which is that machine gun type ability, um, decreasing the magical power scaling from 35% uh, per hit to 30% per hit. So if you hit all five of them, you're only getting a 105% power scaling instead of 122.5. So it's not going to hit quite as hard. I don't think this is going to really change Tiamat's viability too much. I think she's a fringe ban in Joust. She just does too much to, to really ever kind of fall off. Similar to Gilgamesh, it's just the kit itself is good. Um, you can build her in a way that she's going to be useful. And her minions, you can use all three of them in different situations and have it be very impactful in Joust. So she's going to be a little bit worse. Maybe you don't ban her out anymore. Uh, we usually still do just because she does so much and is so disruptive in any sort of team fight situation. Raijin also getting a bit of a nerf. Tycho Drums, which is his ultimate ability, decreasing the magical power scaling from 50% per shot to 40% per shot. Uh, that is pretty big change, actually. 200% total uh, to 160% can really mean the difference between killing somebody or not. Raijin is still a good pick in Joust. I think he can, um, with his mobility, do a lot of things that other gods can't. It's just that that alt specifically isn't going to hit quite as hard. So this is still a good pick. I think he's probably just above average, not necessarily great in Joust, uh, but he can be definitely viable even after this change. Sylvanas just recently got a set of uh, um, buffs and a rework kind of. Um, now he's getting somewhat of another one. His passive where you can upgrade it and it goes from 0.25 per seed that you pick up cooldown to one second. Instead of having that happen at level 20, that's gonna happen at level 17 now. So level 17 through 20, whenever you pick up those seeds, um, every time you pick one up, it's gonna have one second of cooldown um, off of your abilities. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, you don't always reach level 17 in Joust, but you certainly reach level 17 a lot more often than you reach level 20. I still think he struggles from just his immobility in Joust. He can get run down if he gets caught out of position or thrown out of position by a Sobek or something. It's kind of hard for him to survive if you have a coordinated team. So I still think he's one of the, the lower ranked guardians, but this change will help him sustain a little bit longer, keep him in those team fights. That's really kind of what you're using Sylvanas for. Charybdis is the next god we'll talk about, and she is getting a whole host of buffs. Uh, first of all, increasing their base physical power from 34 to 38, and increasing the percent damage on the triple shot basics to 40% from 33%. So she has a pretty unique uh, auto attack chain. I think it's auto attack, auto attack, that she has like a, a triple auto attack right after that in very quick succession. So those are going to do a little bit more damage. Raging Tides, which is the uh, her passive, 
decreasing the item damage reduction from 35 to 30%. This is actually a buff as well. Um, her passive all item effect procs did 35% less damage before. Now they're only going to do 30% less damage. So you're going to be doing more damage on those item effect procs. Spike shot, increasing the damage done to minions uh, from 60 to 100% of her base to 80 to 100% of her base. That'll help her out with some early game clear, which is always nice in Joust. Increasing the splinter damage, physical scaling from 10% to 15% as well. Uh, so that's the damage when uh, that, that auto attack splinters off and hits enemy gods, no matter if it hits them or, or bounces off something else. That'll help her out. I think that's... Um, her kit is very interesting because I don't think she fits that well in any of the very specific builds that most people go, whether it's auto attack based, crit based, or um, ability based. I think this probably puts her more into that that crit territory, uh, but we'll have to see. I think she could be good in Joust, um, but that that is yet to be seen. We haven't had much success with her or seen much success with enemy teams playing against us. And lastly, the Maw Hungers, uh, Cryptus can now move freely in all directions while in her ultimate state. I think that's probably going to be the biggest buff to her. Um, it was a very, very easy ultimate to avoid. And yes, it does a lot of damage. Yes, it can be used uh, to push people away or into the tower or whatever else. But it, if you know it's coming, it's so easy to dodge at this point. So we'll see if this makes it uh, a little bit better of an ability and if this kind of puts Charybdis up in the ranks a little bit. I think she's a very underwhelming hunter from what I've seen of her so far. So it's yet to be seen if this, uh, if this specific update puts her up in those rankings. Kernanos also getting a small buff uh, to his ultimate. It now deals damage to minions and jungle camps slash bosses. When it comes to Joust, this is almost a non-existent buff for him. Um, if you're using the Wild Hunt to secure Bull Demon King, maybe this is going to help you out a little bit. But in almost every other situation, it's really not going to matter that much. I think he's a fairly average, if not slightly below average hunter in Joust specifically. And this buff, I don't think will change that position. Olorun's second ability, Overflowing Divinity, which is his attack speed buff, is getting a little bit of a, a buff itself, increasing the damage dealt on subsequent hits from 30% less damage to 20% less damage. Uh, so you're going to be doing more damage on subsequent hits than you were before because that reduction is decreased. Uh, a little bit strange wording, but the, the end result is that you're going to be doing more damage on those subsequent hits. I don't know if this changes Ola Run's position in Joust, um, maybe along with the, the spectral changes, which if you haven't seen those, check that, the item video out that I linked earlier. But if you're using Ola Run in Joust, it's most likely for his ultimate anyways. Um, so this will help him a little bit, I guess be a little bit better. But if you're looking for an ADC, uh, a mage ADC in Joust, I still think Soul is probably far and away. Um, the mage that you're, you're looking at picking. Vulcan's Earthshaker, his ultimate is decreasing the cooldown from 90 seconds at all levels to 90 seconds down to 70 seconds. A Vulcan can be a really, really oppressive god in Joust. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily that, that very top tier, but played well, he can be right below that. And I think with this change, the ultimate having 20 seconds off of the cooldown at full level, it will make people want to pick him more often. Just the pure zoning kind of abilities with the, the turrets, um, how slippery he is with a knockup, with a knockback. Uh, I really do think that, that Vulcan is going to be a lot more viable in this next patch. Not that he wasn't completely viable before, but that ultimate is just such a game changer. You can steal objectives with it. You can um, snipe a... a god that's running away uh, so yeah with a, a little bit more cooldown on it i think you are definitely going to see more vulcan in your games agni getting a set of buffs as well noxious fumes now dealing bonus damage uh, when you stun an enemy and we combine it with any of the fire abilities so he's going to get 20 
up to 100 on that bonus damage plus 20% magical power scaling. So that combo that everybody uses Agni for is now just going to do a little bit more damage. Flame Wave also decreasing that mana cost um, at later levels from 100 down to 80. So you'll be able to use that more often. And Rain Fire uh, increasing the mana cost from 0 to 10. So that's technically probably a nerf, uh, but really that shouldn't that shouldn't be a really huge change by any means. You can still get all three of those Halo Bombs off for 30, 30 mana. Um, Maybe it's going to impact one or two situations, but that's really not going to change that much. Agni can be a good good god in Joust. Um, not necessarily exceptional, but usually never bad, um, especially with the longest dash in the game. He has pretty good zoning potential, uh, pretty good self-peel on himself too. So pocket pick, not necessarily a priority, um, but with these changes, he should be a little bit more viable himself. Mulan also getting a little bit of a buff. Um, her training arc which is her passive it's what allows her to kind of level up her abilities individually as you hit abilities or do damage or whatever else uh, decreasing the skill required to unlock the upgrades on her sword ability from 600 to 6000 uh, 500 to 5000 is what the new um, skill required is going to be and then the spear ability same thing instead of 600 to 6000 it's going to be 500 to 5000 also increasing the skill gain from minions um, 20% to 30% towards all three abilities. What this means is that you're going to be able to use the minions, hitting your abilities on minions more often to actually level your abilities. That's going to be easier to level those abilities, at least the spear and the, the sword, earlier. And Mulan is already a pretty tough to deal with early god. So if you're picking Mulan, I think that she's actually an above average warrior, uh, although underutilized. But if you're picking Mulan, it should be into some sort of snowball comp that you want to get early kills on because she still falls off a little bit late game, especially with her ultimate where she's standing still for so long. I know you can cancel it now, but then you don't get the full benefit of it. So realistically, Mulan is good, but I think she needs to be pieced into a comp that is early snowball based amaterasu divine presence getting an increase in bonus power from that uh valor aura that she has when she's on the the power aura from 10 to 30 now you're getting a little bit more early game bonus power 14 to 30 instead making her a little bit more viable early game also heavenly reflection getting increased self damage mitigation while you're charging the ability Kind of the same thing, instead of 3% to 15%, it's going to be 7% to 15%. So same thing as Divine Presence, giving her a little bit more early game viability. Amaterasu really does have that game-changing ultimate, similar to like a, a Guan Yu. But where Guan Yu brings a team fight presence to the table, I think Amaterasu kind of lacks that. Sure, she has a, a power aura, she has a speed aura, but in most cases... If you pick Amaterasu in Joust, you're probably going to fall behind early. Um, and falling behind early in Joust is pretty detrimental. So even with these changes, I still think Amaterasu is a below average warrior uh, in Joust. The last change is Achilles. Uh, he's getting a buff to his combat dodge, which is his um, three ability where you can kind of dodge to the side, auto attack. And if you hit it, you get another auto attack. Increasing the damage from 50, 190 to 60, 200. So it's doing more damage at all levels. And realistically, if you're hitting both of those um, attacks, you're getting you know, 20 more damage on that first that first ability instead of 10. Uh, same thing with the, the last ability. You're doing 400 total instead of 380. Um, so that is good. That's a good change for Achilles. I already think Achilles is one of the stronger warriors in joust having the ability to just eliminate one person at least one person from a fight when they get low enough is just so impactful in a 3v3 game mode making it 3v2 puts you at such an advantage um, so i think achilles he was already probably top top three um warriors for me in joust that i like playing with and i think i think this might make him just the best one um, 
you might you could make an argument for for some other warriors too, but I just think he's so versatile that that he's my favorite warrior to play in Joust. I think a hundred percent. Odin is is definitely up there too, but this change with Achilles will just make him do a little bit more damage at every level. So he will be very good. That is it. That is my rundown of all the god changes happening in the Queen of the Banshees update. Uh, this is live on October 19th. Uh, so if you did learn something, if you can take something away from this video that makes you a better Joust player, uh, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitch at StoopChild with three O's. I stream there almost every weeknight and then longer sessions on the weekends. Come hang out, um, say hi, and just, just watch Watch what we do in our games, and hopefully you can take something away from that as well. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys next time.